All right. We are live with Ashes Pathfinders, episode 72. Today on this fantastic and uh, glorious Sunday, I'm joined today by Mackie. Welcome, Mackie. Hello. Welcome back. And I'm joined again by Pacha up in the top right. Welcome back. Pacha. Hello, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and Wandering Mist, always a pleasure as well. Good in the evening. Right. Everyone grab your cup of tea. We can have a good time. <laughs> fantastic so i was actually i was actually telling them we were get, kind of getting into a big discussion and i was like oh my god let's just go live let's just save it save it hold on wait for it wait for it we've got a bunch of bullet points on the list uh, that were uh kind of put together in terms of uh reflecting on the most recent live stream from ashes of creation welcome to everybody in chat and shout out thank you so much shazad for the 22 months in a row subscribed here on twitch thanks so much man appreciate it bro it's actually my little brother <laughs> oh is <laughs> it Shazad. yeah that's Shazad, my little brother one of my little brothers the other one's on his way home but uh God. welcome to everybody here in chat and uh <laughs> this is <laughs> so unfortunate when you see that question because eq <laughs> we've got it somebody in chat you can't see it here on, on twitch and you won't be able to see it on youtube because why because i encourage you to be here live for the show on sundays but AQ has actually been around for some other of the MMOs that I cover. And uh, yeah, this is for the MMO. This podcast is always about the MMO, uh, MMORPG and development. And uh, let's just kind of dig right in, okay? We've got a bunch of bullet points, right, uh, related to this last live stream. I also uh, did a quick review this most recent uh, Thursday. Uh, it was kind of a few hours after the live stream had actually had aired. And we basically uh, discussed some points around it, made some bullet points for the show, did that live, had a pretty decent turnout. I was actually surprised by it. Um, but we had some pretty good conversation and, and actually gathered some questions too to bring up. So we'll be doing that towards the end of the, uh, the bullet points that I've put together for the show today. Uh, but yeah, so there were some points around class info release expectations. And I believe that Margaret had made a uh point to kind of talk on this saying essentially that as we were getting towards um alpha one you'd start to see some what it seemed like be would be blog posts around this um but yeah just kind of curious what you all what your all uh your initial impressions were before we dig too far in like were you pretty happy with the live stream things that surprised you um and maybe some of the the points of discussion that you were most interested in in seeing Anybody just jump in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I was pretty satisfied with this uh, live stream. Um, some of the points they 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 uh, they brought up were eh, they were okay. Um, we'll talk about this later, but um, mm -hmm. I was kind of disappointed on the uh, the Q and A session of it all. It's just a repeat of every every Q and A that we've ever heard. Um, yeah, that's, that's just all I got for that. It's fair. What about you guys? Yeah, I was pretty satisfied with the fact that we got to see more footage uh, during the stream. So, like, bring it. I'm so happy that we're starting to see, like, consistent actual, like, gameplay footage, mm -hmm. whether it's live or whether it's pre-recorded. I don't care. Like, the game is shaping up to be, like, to look like an actual MMO and not not a BR which is why we're we're here talking about it because that's mm -hmm. what we bought into. Right. Um but yeah, the Q&A honestly at this point when there's a Q&A, I tend to completely mm -hmm. either black out or mute the stream or just leave when it's at the Q&A because it's same old same old It's just like things that they say that it's like answers that Steven or Jeffrey give that might just get changed down the line. It's answers without necessarily, and that's not the concept that like that's not the point of it, but there's no proof of concept behind those answers. It's normal, it's a QA, so that's fine. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of why I kind of like brush it off because it's nothing really confirmed. Yeah, agreed. Uh I Again, I really like the gameplay that they showed. I, I love the fact that they gave us the point of view of the mage as opposed to the cleric this time, which was one of my things that I was looking for, that they would not just do repeats of the cleric gameplay. 
So that was really cool. And it really gave an insight into what they're looking at. And I'm like you, Patch, I when it comes to the q and I generally just tune off it and I'll, I'll look down, I'll sort of skim through the transcripts afterwards yeah. to see if there's any new information there. But the majority of it will be things that we've heard before. If, you, if you've been following the game for a while, which all of us have, there will be, um, it's going to be mostly repeated stuff for the benefit of the new, mm. new guys who've only just started following. So, which is fine. I don't, begrudge them that but mm-hmm. that's yeah. it it just it's not relevant information for us who've been following it for years and years yeah i feel like i'm probably going to be jumping around and not really hitting these exactly in order because i just kind of threw them together but uh so talking about the class information release expectations right uh margaret had said that the plan was that be they'd be essentially releasing these stories as around the classes as we got closer to alpha one uh and there wasn't really any discussion around uh a timeline for that uh i I know that they also made mention that uh pi would be uh testing in may sometime i believe that was like announced um so of course pi generally is closed testing Right. It's kind of like Alpha Zero was. It's just closed testing. You can't show it. Um, so unless they change that, don't expect to really see that. Um, there was kind of an, a bit of an ambiguous uh, discussion around that we might also be seeing more streams related to Alpha One as we approached Alpha One. Um, I was assuming that meant it, it wasn't really too clear on whether or not that meant from their content creators, from people that had alpha access, if there would be, you know, or if they just meant specifically them streaming. Uh, So I wasn't really too sure, but uh, I guess as we talk about the classes, right, the thing that I'm just going to jump around here, there was one thing I noticed that was a bit surprising. Overall, I felt like the stream was pretty good. I felt like they've really been solidifying the type of presentation that we're going to get to expect from them. Um, So that's a positive. I think that, that it's actually... A positive also that they've been consistent with, at least from my perspective, this is just my my perception and my opinion, but I, I feel like they've been pretty consistent in terms of the way that the, the delivery has gone. I think that's been pretty consistent since the, the end of the last year. I think that they've been uh, reinforcing that and building upon that. And uh, I feel like it's being polished more and more. And I think that that's actually been happening uh, even in spite of the fact that they have been doing the last months and this most recent one from home. So that's a positive, I think, in terms of uh, structure and consistency and delivery. Uh, there were a lot of things that were delivered that I was really a little surprised to see, which we'll talk about a little bit more as we get moving along. But one thing that actually was surprising, I, I agree with you all, that the seeing, I think Mist actually had hit on this point, which was, uh, looking at the dungeon, we got to see a different perspective than the cleric. Um, of course, if you've been watching, you know, we've seen previews of uh, different class perspectives. We've seen the mage before, but I think we actually saw Steven's perspective and he was on what seemed to be his mage or his caster, right? his sorcerer class character. And as he was running along, I noticed something that I was a little surprised to see i saw abilities from other archetypes on there other classes one specifically was a tank ability um and so i was noticing that they made mention too about how this is the time this was specifically from steven that this is the time that we're they're working on you know fleshing out class identity and that to do that they're essentially throwing a lot of different uh you know, skills together that the skills that you saw at, they had level 10 characters there and they were running through the dungeon and they had kind of, uh, you know, shot these characters to level 10. They clearly were going to have more skills available to them as developers running around than you would have at that level, which is something else they mentioned. Um, But I was actually wondering, I was like, so are they redesigning? Because, those class skills for some of those specific classes were already outlined in visuals, right? Yeah. 
the mage had their class skills kind of outlined the ranger uh the um tank and the cleric right they all had these these skill li- like that were listed and i was noticing some mix and matching of those different uh abilities on the bar and so i was wondering are they maybe potentially redesigning them a bit did you all notice that do you have any thoughts around any of that as well i think it's unlikely that they're completely redesigning it may just be a matter of um those they're just using uh like placeholder icons just to fill out the bar and make it look like there are more abilities on them because you notice that Stephen only used about three or four different abilities true i didn't notice that like and the i think the tank ability icon that you saw i don't think he even used that i didn't like, see at it at all yeah um so it's it might just be a matter of they wanted it to look more fleshed out in terms of what would be on the bar so now as a mm. representation of what you'd have when the game goes live mm-hmm. I don't know. I, maybe I'm just bullshitting at this point, but yeah, that, <laughs> that might be it's a bit of speculation. Yeah. No, but you're making it's, you're you're making a good point, Miss. Like, um, he did only use about three or four of all the skills he had in his bar, and even though during the stream he was saying like, um, what was he saying? Uh, you guys will notice that like I have a lot more skills on my bar than blah 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 in most MMOs. Mm-hmm. I was kind of, it was kind of a weird flex to me, but like uh, I did notice that like on all these skills that he had on his bar, he was only using a few of them. And even though we had a few skills that were supposed to be on other main classes, uh, those skills were never being used. So were they placeholders? Uh, I think so. I think they were just they were just there to fill up a bar for their UI. Um, if they're completely redesign- redesigning the classes, I wouldn't. I would be surprised, but like I wouldn't fall down, or like fall off my chair, because they did promise like blog posts for each classes mm-hmm. a long time ago, and we haven't gotten squat for any of those classes yet. Like we don't know what the only thing we have regarding classes are like tidbits, like sound bits that we got, and uh what else like the skills that we signed the demos mm-hmm. that were like uh, on rail demos for i don't know which con- convention so i don't think they're redesigning necessarily but you know i wouldn't freak out if they were because it seems like it was already pretty iffy for them like they don't mm-hmm. seem too sure of what they're doing for the classes yet right? yeah i have to agree with both of you guys i think it's not a total redesign maybe it's like you, like you said, it's a template of them having to show off the bar. Uh, maybe it's their internal uh, like build that they use, and they can interchange those uh, skills so that way whoever is working on that certain class at the moment, they have access mm-hmm. to all the abilities, so that way they can test all the abilities. Like That's just my guess. It mm, makes sense. Yeah, there was speculation. I think that's something that we'll, we're going to be kind of touching base on a specific forum post by a community member too uh, a little later and so i think this this particular point is going to be relevant to that at least parts of what we've been talking about but you know you talked about P- pachi talked about how uh the class you know releases on the class and some posts around that were supposed to have been there already and so then that kind of has me go back and and wonder what your thoughts also are in terms of well if we were supposed to see them before um what would be you know what kind of expectations would be realistic for us as community members if we're talking about seeing anything moving in towards alpha at this point in terms of these posts and what they might you know wishful thinking what do we want to be there if we've waited this long uh you know as they're talking about information around classes are we looking for you know this kind of bread and butter snapshot of skills again um i'm not i'd want to see something more because we've already been there um but then the question is well what is uh significant enough uh for a community member that's been waiting what do they want to see okay. so for that i have a perfect example that i don't i don't even remember where it's from <laughs> but i think it was a game that was in development and i really like how they presented like the game or the classes basically what they did was like a big blog post for their signature classes 
um where let's let's go for example with the ranger right mm -hmm. like let's go for the ranger in ashes of creation instead of doing those snapshots of like just a list of skills that they have with some flavor text in them and like placeholder numbers give us the actual experience of what a player should expect uh his experience to be from a ranger's perspective yeah. for the first 10 levels of the game give me a few of the skills just a few not all of them just a few of the skills that he's going to gain what type of gameplay he's going to expect uh what type of uh, weapons he should be looking to use and like his strengths his weaknesses the types of like class abilities that we're going to have like the utility skills that they were talking about make a big article about one class with that experience that people should should expect and we all know that steven's good at using fillers for words so like that would be perfect for like just let your imagination go wild and like let your inner like role player slash writer just go wild in there mm. and just write a whole article about it and that's all we need for like two months because we're already going to have one class and then two months later do the tank and then the fighter and then the mage cleric blah 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 yeah, it's something I've been wondering about is like, how are we really going to see, like, what's a realistic delivery of all this this year, too? Because you got, man, it's just with things going on with the coronavirus, you have that to be considerate about. And then it's like, realistically, if we were to say that the, you know, the expectation, at least the expectation, I think that's been set at this point uh, on some previous live streams now has been, uh, we're hoping to have some open streamable play testing kind of happening towards the end of the year in the fall right so from my perspective everything up until that point in time is going to be potentially closed testing potentially showcasing of classes um, kind of explaining and elaborating a little bit more like they've been doing uh last month and this most recent live stream as well kind of showcasing uh elements of alpha one i mean honestly if they continue to showcase elements of alpha one like they've been doing the past two streams as we continue that's gonna be a pretty significant amount of information by the time we get to those potential fall uh streams and showcases and stuff like that um but it's still you know you still kind of wonder what's realistic depending on how this stuff plays out over the course of the next year or so with uh, COVID 19 and and how that impacts the studio and hiring and then moving to a studio and all that stuff too it's just kind of yeah it's kind of the over arcing question in my mind i think a lot of people in the community are pretty understanding that that could be causing delays um but i think it kind of goes back to i think it's going to come back to a point that we were talking about uh before we started today which is also going to tie into a lot of points in the future here that we're going to have today about um clarity consistency and uh transparency um so we'll talk a little bit more about that but they they talked about the leveling times being higher in this game uh, than we would expect uh, to have seen in pretty most MMOs where you can level really quick in a week or something. Not going to be the expectation here. So uh, more towards the hardcore side, but not super hardcore. Um, but it didn't really, you know, I think what was the ex what was the expectation? And if you guys remember this, I want to say he said it could be a couple months. Was that right? I might be I might be misspeaking, but I'm just going off of what I I feel like I remember. There was an old couple of weeks. Couple weeks at, mo at at fastest then. Okay. I remember there was an old quote. Like we're going back a, a year or so now. Let me just try and find it. Yeah, it was on, I, I about think it was about a couple weeks level. up to maybe a couple maybe weeks, a month, a month and a half. Like ballpark figure, like forty-five days was kind of what they said initially. So you'd be uh, like, honestly, that, that would make me happy. Two weeks to two uh, months, depending on how much you're willing to like work really hard for yeah. it. Is that max level? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, fifty. Fifty. Yeah. Okay. Two here months, we go. That's that's still pretty quick. If you're going, that's still pretty quick for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it it depends what they mean by like. Obviously, if you spend, if you know life it and spend twelve hours a day in the game, then you're going to yeah, level up faster. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, that, that's why. So, I mean, all we know for sure is that uh, 
the level cap's going to be 50. Right. So for me personally, I don't really care how long it takes as long as the leveling is well paced mm -hmm. and it is meaningful. Because there are so many yeah. different MMOs that as long as it's have completely pointless. Yeah. yeah and yeah. like completely pointless um, leveling grinds in so many different other MMOs. And you just get to the point and you think, why am I doing this? What's the point? Just let me get to max level already, because that's where all your content is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have to think about the people, like you said, the hardcore people who go to every MMO and they grind and they get uh, max level within like a couple hours, a couple days, and then they get to the end end the game and they're like this game is crap there's no content here <laughs> what are we supposed to do now you know what are you going to do to compensate me or you know to make me happy and so that mm -hmm. word of mouth will start to spread that wow. ashes has no end game content or the end game content that gamers have come to know as in game content so yeah. it could go it's either it could go both ways like you could have the people who love this leveling at a slower pace and they do all the side quests, they do all these other missions to get, you know, slowly to their point of uh, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> but then uh, on the other hand, you get, yeah, you're going to have those in every game, so it just mm -hmm. just depends on, like you said, what the meat and potatoes of Ashes of Creation is and what are, the, what are they offering to the player base, because honestly, if it takes two months, roughly two months, for a casual player to get to end game, uh, for me, and I'm probably probably speaking for one or two of you here, it'll probably take you about uh, less than two weeks, a week maybe, depending on how hardcore you are. True. Yeah, I feel like that'd be pretty accurate. Yeah, if, I didn't, if I didn't have a job, it would take me like an afternoon. <laughs> but <laughs> if I have a job, well, it's going to take me two months. Yeah. <laughs> you say that. You say that, and yet we don't know how... Mm -hmm the leveling will tie into the no progression. Right. Yes. And then we, if you have a head start as well, you're going to be locked out for, what, two days? Yeah. Before you can level a node, so... Yeah, right. Yeah. And and if you, for example, if you don't get level 40-plus mobs until the node reaches uh, Metropolis stage, and it takes three months to get the node to Metropolis, then it, it doesn't matter how fast you level because you're going to be gated by the node progression. So that that's something that I'm very curious to see yeah. what's going to happen with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, honestly, I I agree with the fact that like no matter how long it takes, uh, make it worth my time. Like make it so the activities I'm doing are not the three same activities that I do, i.e. kill X amount of mobs, gather X amount of things, and go talk to a npc and then go talk to b npc like mm -hmm. i don't want these three things to be everything i do and if that's what it is then fine i'm just gonna grind my ass off until end game but then that's kind of the problem with most mmos or most games that say we don't want to have an end game we want the entire game to be fun and entertaining the problem that tends to happen with these games is that once you get to max level basically that that quote that they use was just an excuse to say we're not going to make different content at the end mm -hmm. so you reach to max level and you're doing the same three things and then they're just like, well, you did the same thing during the whole process. You weren't locked out of it while you were leveling up. But like, that's just BS and that's just right. boring. Like, <laughs> like I, don't, uh, I, I personally don't want to be able to do a raid at level 20. I don't <laughs> want to. That'd be a little bit silly. I don't want to. Like, that's supposed to be wanna. something that I, I want to feel like... I raiding and like <laughs> castle sieges are something for the more powerful uh, something for people who worked for it it's gonna suck because i'm not gonna be able to do it but once i am able to i'm it's just gonna feel that much more precious mm. 
want to read a comment too from Oz and Chai said, I'm interested in how, or they said they're interested in how they're putting emphasis on class posts and not on religion and weapon posts. I was under the impression that your entire class was made up of all these aspects. Another comment from TLF in terms of leveling progression that if, even if it was uh, between two and two weeks and two months, that would still be too fast for her. And then uh, uh, Oz again with uh, talking about, that they had mentioned quite early, discuss that levels were not going to be overly important. So it does make leveling speed less important anyway. I would say probably yes. I feel like the the main focus, like Miss said in chat, was like node progression, world progression. Uh, I think yeah. that I'm I'm completely, you know, from and this is just an opinion piece for me, right? But you know, I've I've done the grind to max level really quick. I've done that over and over and over, right? I mean. I'm not a big fan of like the focus being on getting to some level just because that's where the content is. Like I'd prefer there to be content at any level as I'm, you know, exploring the world and doing all that. And that's essentially what's supposed to be beautiful about ashes of creation, this living, breathing world that changes based on the players in it that can then separate it from other servers. So you have these different realities, right? Um, but you know, but that kind of, you know, I think leveling and and it taking a long time. If it took me three le like three months, even playing pretty regularly, like two to three months at playing super regularly to get to to max level, I'd be cool with it as long as everything along the way was meaningful, right? Like you know, the experience along the way didn't feel like forced to do certain content. Like I want to I want to feel like it's important to me as a player and as my character that I'm playing to be engaging in these different elements of, of the world that are the content along the way that I think is, you know, also really uh, parallel to what they're, they've been saying all along too. So to me, having that expectation, I don't think is unrealistic because I think that was kind of the, kind of the set expectation for us as players by them as that's right. Yeah. So, um, but, you know, talking about some of the skill choices, they mentioned that too, that, you know, essentially, however many skills you choose along the way, or even at in game, there's only so many choices you get to make. You only get so right. many. Don't know exactly what that is, <laughs> but and that's okay later, right? Yeah. But uh, but skill choice, uh, you know, has like that, kind of that idea of a risk reward. You can only choose these, and if you choose these, you don't get these. Uh, and so I was actually really glad to hear that because I, I think that there's, I think it's important to have an emphasis on these things that they're really hard set on as they're kind of moving forward, which they did, uh, kind of hit on that, which we'll get to a little bit later, but the eight player dungeons, the eight class base foundation was, I was glad to hear that. Um, I, I'm actually pretty cool with the idea of an eight man group or eight person group. What about you all? I'm cool with it. Uh, the only, like, I think it would, it would make something really fun. Um, like honestly, eight people in dungeon, it makes it a lot more active, a lot more, uh, action packed for a dungeon. And if you have like mm. eight different classes in your dungeon, there are so many things that they can put in their dungeons to make it fun based on the utility skills that these classes have. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. And I really like the idea. The only thing that like... I'm a little iffy on is I don't have eight friends that I can just call on at all times to be like, Hey, let's go do this dungeon. So like, where am I going to go in the town? Like how long is it going to take me to find these seven people to get in a dungeon instead of just like three or four. Mm -hmm. So on that point, would it be, would the system function as say you go in with a full eight, eight people party <laughs> And uh, you don't get any type of like uh, help from the system to like buff you or to make up for this class missing or whatever. But if you go in with say three person or four person, will the system sort of like buff your DPS or buff your healing output or you know try to try to uh, try to supplement what what you're missing in that group? You know what I mean? Like, is that how it's going to work, or is it just essentially? Uh, you don't have friends, so too bad. <laughs> Go in with the three people you do have, and then 
you all get steamrolled by the mobs, you know? Like, like, <laughs> Too bad. Go on Facebook. Find <laughs> <a few friends. laughs> uh, you know, go to Zone Chat and look at uh, uh, willing to buy yeah. friends, bunny girls. You know? <laughs> oh, my God. I, 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 <laughs> because I just feel like eight people is a lot for these regular dungeons. That's my, that's it my is. big issue. It is it's, a lot, it's, it's which quite is why a bit. most people don't do it. Right. Yeah, like ESO. What is ESO's cap for trials? Isn't it 12? 12. 12. 12. PvP like, is 24. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 24. Mm -hmm. And then regular yeah. dungeons is four. four mm -hmm. So, like, trials take 12, and just trials can take a while sometimes, depending on the trial I'm trying to do. Yeah. Depending on the raid, the raid I'm trying to do. For anyone who plays ESO here, if I'm trying to do uh, the trial in uh, the Brass Fortress, uh, the Asylum, like Same. yeah, 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 like that that one with uh, So the Sill, I have never managed to find a single group. Really? Every uh -huh. time, like, hey, looking for group there, mm -hmm. nobody's running that. They're <laughs> doing like the regular one, Hellrus, Citadel, Sanctum Ophidia, and all these all these guys from Craglorn. Mm. So what if that's what happens in Ashes, where I want to do this dungeon because I have a quest there, uh, and nobody's doing it? I can't just call on seven of my friends. I don't have friends, okay? <laughs> like my mom loves me, but she doesn't play Ashes. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, it's it's a great point. I mean, the digging up seven other people just to run a dungeon is is a on itself. I mean, that's almost up to like WoW raid level, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, and the the other thing, aside from just the size, is also the group composition. They in the live stream, Stephen made it sound <laughs> like they were designing the dungeons around. So you got your eight people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got your eight people, uh, mm -hmm. one for every class, right? If that's the case, if they're designing their groups around that, then you're going to have one tank, one healer, and six DPS, which is a complete mismatch. That is like, wobbly as hell. It is. And and you just think, how how is it even going to work in terms of things like the uh, aggro management, threat management, uh, healing? I Usually when you've got a group that size, you're going to have maybe... Uh, probably two tanks and two healers and the rest DPS. That's sort of the, the balance that you have. But one tank, one healer, it seems a little bit odd. So I wonder how they're going to actually work around that if they do go with these eight-man parties. Prepare and for was it, uh, to go into deep depression. <laughs> Remind me if I'm incorrect if there will be a LFG? No. Okay, no, that's another. No LFG, that, that's, so that's that, okay. my issue. That's the other issue. Like you have to go to town and scream, you know, the top of your lungs, looking for <laughs> this person, this person, this person. Yeah. Uh, well, this like I like again, like I was trying to point out, the system let you go in with multiples of, you know, other classes, so you can supplement mm. that healing you're missing or that tank you're missing, something mm. like that. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know if I can depend on seven other people at once either. Because uh, like you, no. you don't know if that DPS that you're picking up is, uh, you know, AFK or, you know, just joins your party and then just sits at the entrance kind of thing. It's like, uh, I, don't I know, didn't man. mind that. I didn't mind that. in <laughs> wow. Where there was like that LFG stone in front of every single dungeon. And I would just sit there for 20 minutes mm -hmm. doing my own thing yeah. while the game was looking for a group for me. Now the group is going to be almost twice the size of that. And I'm not going to have that rock to find people. So like, I don't want to do like ESO and go to one place and do slash zone LFG this dungeon or LF LF four more players DPS for this dungeon. I don't want to do that. Cause like, then if all I'm of your not be productive. I want to be at least doing something else in my house or watching community on Netflix <laughs> while the game is looking. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I like, I, I agree with you there because uh, when I played Terra, it was like that too. You can step out of the dungeon if you're missing someone and you can look in that zone. 
and until someone popped in, then you just go through the portal and you're all in the same instance. Um, the thing with uh, ESO is like, like you said, you're you're typing in slash zone slash whatever, and then you have all this other junk <laughs> in your way, so people are not even responding to you because it's getting it's getting yeah because um, they haven't even seen your message yeah and they're like oh hey you need to <laughs> it gets are you the one selling buried. crowns yeah <laughs> <laughs> no I need, I, I need friends so, so the friends. the way around this if if they were to keep the eight man party there's a couple of things they could do either have the the instance dungeon scalable so like mackie said you can go in with just three or four people and the dungeon scales with either your damage scales up or the amount of mobs and stuff scales down they could do that or, for a minimum of four yeah mm. i'd say yeah a minimum of four yeah. um the other alternative they could do is following original guild wars route where you they give you uh npcs that c you can recruit to uh make up the numbers which is a very viable strategy and you can do that i used to do that quite mm -hmm. a lot if um, the only sorry to interrupt you no go ahead go ahead so the only thing wrong with with uh that and i just thought about this <laughs> is uh say they do supplement they give you npcs they boost your dps they boost your healing they boost your tanking and you go in, will you then be gated from uh, doing the harder in instance of that dungeon because you're missing these these players? So until you get a full party, you can't progress further. Mm. Or then you run into the to the uh, the uh, problem of people doing runs, uh, but they can cheese it, so they don't want a full party. They only want mm. one other person. Or Two other people to join them because they can get through it faster and then therefore they can just keep cycling through runs to get the gear that they need and or the mats that they need and then oh, cheese it yeah. out. you know uh, i wouldn't have a problem if let's say they boost or they allow npcs by the way i love this idea of npcs that just brings me back to guild wars like not mm. to guild wars one where you could have an npc follow you around I love this idea and I feel like I wouldn't complain personally if I was blocked from doing hard mode on this dungeon because I don't have friends. I wouldn't. <laughs> what are we, chop liver? <laughs> like, as long as I can get through the content story mode, like, I can like appreciate the actual content mm -hmm. that they put in without becoming, be, without going full try hard. I wouldn't mind that. And if I want to do hard mode, then you need an eight man group or at least seven that I would be yeah. fine with. As long as people can do the content, that's mm -hmm. what bothers me is that there's a, there's a sweet, there's a sweet spot between, I think there was an interview with uh, Mike Morhaime from Blizzard uh, uh, way back when, when he said that like MMOs used to be super social, mm. I disagree with him on like a lot of things in his mm. interview, but he said something important is that MMOs used to be super social because they kind of forced you into finding people to do stuff with yeah. and not anymore. Now it's super easy, like Care Bear, like cookie cutter kind of content that you can do by yourself almost. Mm. And there's a sweet spot. You shouldn't, if if the requirement for a dungeon is seven more random people, that's that's way too extreme into making me like into forcing me to find people. But if I can do the content with three more, that would be fine. Right. Hey, I mean, gotta, I never had that. My bad. No, you're good. I just want to make sure I didn't miss this in chat because we got a subscriber here on the channel, Os Osmosion. Thank you. For the tier one sub appreciate that man but yeah mackie please continue i was just gonna say i've never had that issue of not being social in an mmo because i'm a healer so i'm always <laughs> like hey i'll heal you for this or erp for a healing you know or something and so i've always i've always been social <laughs> like i've always been social like yeah i'll be your bunny girl for two days you know yeah oh my God. Like, how, how is it you bring up erp in literally every single podcast it's it's actually gotta, incredible gotta give you guys a laugh every now and, and plus so. earlier this week too you didn't even make it a full week before i saw that somewhere else I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no I but I, I, I see that from mostly dps's who um, can't find groups because they don't step outside of their box of 
I'm a DPS. Everyone should come to me because I have all the d- the damage, you know, mm-hmm. kind of attitude. And uh, and it's like, no, dude, you got to talk to people and say, hey, I'm DPS. Uh, I have this gear or I have this combat rating or whatever. Let me join your dungeon kind of thing. You can't just sit there and think everyone's going to come and, you know, bow down to you. It mm-hmm. doesn't work that way. Always the tanks and the healers. That's what people need. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, there's always going to be and people hate hearing this too, but you know, there's a space for that. There's people that are like selling them runs. You get those gills. They'll be like, we're putting together. We'll carry a person or two person, you and know, that's fine. you know, that, that could oh, do yeah. that too. But yeah. you know, in, yeah. in my opinion, that's, that's great. Actually. Mm-hmm. It's part of the player economy. Like, yeah. Kind of wondering though, you know, like, it's the mercenary system, right? Are, yeah, I mean, it's part of like being a mercenary. Mm-hmm. And are they? If there's gonna be uh, like you're gonna the crafters and the gatherers are gonna have to go into high level dungeons to collect certain materials. Yeah, they they might so not be as high. Up. Yeah, they would. They absolutely would. And I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. I will take a mm-hmm. gatherer into a dungeon or raid if they're gonna pay me for it. That's mm-hmm. abs- Yeah, I'll do that. No problems at all. I'll keep you safe, buddy. Yeah. How do y'all feel yeah. about locks? Like you know, locks to dungeons, like instance dungeons and like raids. I feel like. How do you feel about locks? You know, like it should be like account wide mm-hmm. level or character wide. Mm-hmm. If it's if it's well for me, it's like. If it's a uh, a uh, base game, I don't have to describe this. Mm-hmm. It's like what ESO does. Their public dungeons, their base game dungeons aren't locked. Delves Anyone can do stuff, them at yeah. any time. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, I've played games, mostly Asian MMOs, where the harder uh, content is locked. You can only do it twice a day. You can do it like uh, two times a day, whatever. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> I've never been. I'm not a fan of that locked content. I yeah. I'm okay with like um, I don't know like if it's a trial and there's like some super awesome legendary that that falls out of there or something mm-hmm. I'm okay with the lock on that um, but anything lower than that like a like a twelve like a eight man or a five man or whatever those shouldn't have locks you should just be able to farm those whenever you feel like it mm-hmm. especially if they're seasonal content and they're locked behind a time yeah oh my god yeah yeah true. Yeah, it seems like in chat, that's like the consensus too. You don't gate or lock content. I think I get it too, though. Like for a raid, like I would understand like a weekly raid lock, but outside of that, like I don't really see the point in it. Yeah. I, uh, no, I, I didn't weekly, understand the point. I mean, weekly, I'm fine with that. Honestly, like in WoW, I loved it so much. In WoW Classic, when I was like 16, I, don't know, I was like hardcore raiding with my friends. I just loved that. Guys, we have a week. To do this raid this raid is saved so like we killed that boss the raid it, even if it's mm. instance when we leave when we come back that boss is not going to respawn it's saved for us for a week mm-hmm. we have a week to try it mm-hmm. once we complete it good shit let's brag about it let's do weird flex on the orgrimmar bank for like <laughs> two hours but that's it we can't do it for another for another week I yeah. just love that. As long as the raid, as long as the content is hard enough for it to take that amount of time, like let's say they do like a lock for a week, but it mm. takes you like 15 minutes in a speed run to do, that that's a big no-no for me. But if they do a lock for a week, it should take about a week to do for, you know, your casual, your most, your average, your average gill. Mm-hmm. That I'd be fine. A lock is fine as long as it follows the average player's capability of doing it. Mm-hmm. It's like what uh, Cheryl in chat said. Uh, mm-hmm. Folks aren't on the same time frame as everyone else. So they mm-hmm. play like at 3 in the morning. Mm-hmm. You know, they, it'd be nice for them to find a group at that, that weird hour to go in and farm for yeah. themselves. Which I'm kind of on that yeah. spectrum as well. I play at odd hours. Like uh, I'll be on at noon, and then later on I'll be on at three a.m. <laughs> like, yeah, hey, what's up, everybody hours. awake? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're on all different hours, man. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Mm. I have encountered this very problem. I've been playing a lot of uh, Final Fantasy XIV recently, mm-hmm. and I don't know what the developers with. I'm, I'm prepare yourselves i'm gonna rant a little bit on this because it really frustrates me i don't know what yeah i know (laughs) i really don't know what the developers were thinking where they put a mandatory story and which you have to do you can't skip it you can't avoid it you have to do it 
and they put mandatory dungeon runs in that mandatory story. Yeah, and nobody does and, them anymore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they only do it because they're forced to do it because they have like their dungeon roulette type of thing. Daily so the high roulette. level players, yeah, they have the daily roulette so that the uh, the high level players get rewards mm-hmm. for participating in low level dungeons. That's the only way the system works. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't work because. I I logged on like like Mackie. Sometimes I play at odd hours. I I logged on at three o'clock in the morning, and I'm playing a DPS class. And I was sat in a dungeon queue for forty to forty five minutes yeah. doing nothing. I could not because there's nothing else to do. It's literally just the story. There's nothing else to do. Okay. So you're just sat there twiddling my thumbs. Like literally, I'm when I'm playing Final Fantasy XIV, I'm spending more time watching movies than actually playing the game. Yeah. While leveling, that's how stupid it is. Then, so, yeah. It makes I don't think there sense. should be any any type of forced content on on anyone. Period. Yeah. Um, if you're that story must really suck if they're forcing it on you. Like we wrote we wrote this story for you. We want you in it. You know, type of thing. Like I don't want I don't want to go through a stupid story mode. Leave me alone. Um, mm-hmm. I do like the idea of uh, rewarding higher end players going back and doing uh, lower end content. Uh, they mm-hmm. had this in Terra Online and they had this in DC Universe, <laughs> where um, you would, <laughs> if you were max level two, you know, you could mentor other other oh, sidekicks, uh, quote unquote. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and you'd yeah. open you'd open your screen and it'd, it'd give you like a, a weekly, awesome. daily reward if you did this lower level dungeon. Mm-hmm. The only drawback was that your skills and everything got equalized or uh, lowered to that dungeon. So you weren't essentially going in there and one-shotting everything. Mm-hmm. But See, that's I really don't like that. I don't like oh. that kind of system at all. I'll tell you why. Because um, you're putting two completely different groups of players together. You're forcing them together. On the one side, you've got the newbies who mm-hmm. are going to the dungeon for the first time. They may not know what they're doing. And then you've got the veterans who are going in there, and literally, they're only there for the wards, which means they want to go through as fast as possible, Mm, and they will rush through. True. And I had this. Like, uh, again, going back to Final Fantasy XIV, there's the, like, the climax of the the first, the the level 50 story, the base game story. Climax is in a dungeon, and I was actually really looking forward to it. I genuinely did enjoy it the story up to that point and i was like yes we finally get to see the climax and all of this couldn't enjoy it the experience was ruined by the veteran players rushing through as quickly as possible right and it is i don't well, know well eso yeah. suffers from that as well yeah. yeah um if you do your daily uh your daily dungeon runs just randomly <laughs> You'll get people in there who are level 36, 37, and I'm like level 8, 10, whatever. And they're like, this is my first time. And I, okay, so as a healer, sometimes like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll write in chat. Okay, this is what you do at this boss, this boss. But yeah. if I'm in a... <laughs> But if I'm in a hurry, I'm like, like I'm gonna, asshole. I'm gonna throw on this. <laughs> no, I, I'm not an ass. I say, hey guys, uh, I'll throw in my DPS gear and we'll get through this really fast. And I get no objections. They're like, cool. I just need to do the story mode over here. Like, okay, you do that. I'm going, going ahead. You know, and clear it out. Yeah, and we'll just clear out a bunch of mobs up until the boss, and then I'll wait till somebody um, catches up with their story, and they're like, all right, I'm ready, and then we'll continue. But you know, you have to be. It's it's you have to be nice about it don't just go in and be a complete d about everything you know oh, oh, i'm not gonna say anything to my group and, you know <laughs> blow through it or you know yeah like pull all these mobs to one room all the lobbies are dead but you're still alive yeah. killing the boss you know that's not mm-hmm. yeah. at that's, least that's often things. what happens and, and it's so sad yeah, it but, is. but then again so, that that goes on that could that could apply to ashes public dungeons where everyone who's already done that dungeon, they already know where all the loot is going to be, where all the bosses are. They already have all their max gear, and they just come through this, you know, public dungeon, pulling everything mm-hmm. and just grinding. And you have these lower levels who are like, "Uh, guys, what's happening?" <laughs> <laughs> right. The night night screams put a good point here that communication yeah. is key. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's all, here's all the thing about. though: if you're if it's like an ashes where there won't be a dungeon finder. 
where you can actually say, look, this is our group. This is what we expect. We are rushing through. We want to get through as quickly as possible. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Right. And then when you've got a dungeon finder, you don't have that option. Yeah. But also (laughs) with Ashes, you'll have the people who, because it is going to be an open, an open dungeon. Mm -hmm. So you'll have the max people who want to go in there and just one shot newbies for the hell of it. So, you know, like, how do you how do you balance that? Like, oh, we can't go into this dungeon because all the high levels are killing us with AOE. Yeah, I was going to say, too, because uh, Oz had mentioned something up there earlier in chat about getting behind attunements. Um, mm-hmm. that, this is something I don't I don't know how many of you were here, but I feel like this is something we talked about not too long ago. But I'm I love the idea of attunements. Uh, you know, it's kind of like have to having to like earn access to something through a story or some sort of an adventure, like those types of things. One of the things in, in early World of Warcraft that I enjoyed that ended up going away was my key ring. I I actually like really prided myself on having all these different keys to dungeons, to the different doors and things like that. And this is just an example, but, you know, having to actually have that to do it, um, I, I don't know. I've always enjoyed it. I like it. I'm a big proponent of it. Uh, it's an opinion, of course, but... You know, I always thought that was really cool. I was actually kind of bummed out when I lost the key ring and all the keys. And, you know, essentially you're talking about attunements that I kind of picked up in order to have access to certain content. But, um, yeah, but what you said, Mackie, about <clears throat> those open open world sort of dungeons where, you know, anybody can run through there. Uh, I've always I've kind of had some concerns about that. I mean, of course, we, like we, we see it work in like the Elder Scrolls, but it, it's for something that's kind of. I consider somewhat uh, trivial because there's not like really a like a lot of story behind it. It's just a place you go. And if you got a quest for it, sometimes you have a quest for things like delves and, mm-hmm. and everything. And there's a little bit of story, but public dungeons are kind of, you can run through and you can blow through and do it. Um, but even in, in that situation, uh, I, I do have some concerns around the fact that PVP is open world. PVP can happen. People can gank. Yes. There's going to be corruption. Uh, but you know, we don't really know how that's going to work yet in terms of your account, how many characters you can have, how long it takes to, uh, gain enough corruption to where you're no longer even worthwhile in a party at some point. And, you know, uh, how, how quickly are you killing the mobs that are in that dungeon to where some casual person is trying to go through and explore it and then has a whole bunch of them just spawn on top of them and <laughs> get them killed. You know what I mean? Uh, so it's like, how do you, yeah, how do you balance that, right? To, for the people that just want to kind of run through there and get it done, and but the people that want to kind of go through and enjoy the experience, uh, to where you don't really ruin it for one or the other, and still find that balance that's a happy middle ground. It's a it's a tricky situation with something like a public dungeon that you have to to really balance well, and I don't know how they're planning on doing that, but I do think that that's going to be an important element to to be considered about for sure. I don't think open open world dungeons are a good idea. And ever since it's been announced since like, I don't know, before the Kickstarter, mm-hmm. I think I hated the idea because yes, open world dungeons in ESO are a thing. As you said, they're trivial. Most people you're going to meet there are power levelers that are just there for the grind. With like 11 Sky experience Charger. scrolls, mm-hmm. 11 experience scrolls like picked <laughs> on and like they kill yeah. the mob level up five times. But like that's basically their purpose. They look awesome. There's quite a, the, the story in it is quite interesting, kind of like a, kind of like a dungeon, kind of like a quest, but they, they're not necessary. When it's necessary for me to do a dungeon, especially mm-hmm. in an open world pvp game say what you want about corruption it doesn't matter in this case because griefers will grief mm-hmm. uh in an open world dungeon where people want to have world first in that raid and they're just gonna destroy your group as you're fighting the last boss because they mm-hmm. failed so why not destroy your chance of being world first i think it's a horrible idea and i think it's one way of killing the community mm. yep i'm totally on board with everything Pacha just said for the same reason um, of um, say you have a guild who their sole purpose is just to gate other guilds from content so Mm. they find these public dungeons and they're like oh well we're not going to let anybody through 
you know, who isn't in our guild or who, who doesn't pay us a toll or something yeah. ridiculous because it's going to happen. And uh, how do you how do you balance that or how do you uh, how do you fight against that if you're a developer? It's you know, tricky. you want your community to be uh, I think the community open. would deal with that though. This was would actually they, brought up well, would this they, was though? actually brought up somebody brought this up on the forums and the I can't remember who, who it was who made this argument that let's say you've got a, a group of players or a guild that uh, like doesn't want anybody else to go in the open dungeon okay mm. another guild comes along or another group of players comes along and this one like griefing guild like kills them stops them from entering the dungeon okay that's fine the next guild comes along so now and the griefs do the same thing now you've got two sets of mm. uh, groups and two guilds who are now going up against the griefing guilds and it just piles on the more they do it it piles on and on and on until eventually the griefing guild gets overwhelmed yes but, that that actually happen. The, but in the same instance you have these huge guilds going into this dungeon trying to kill these griefers and you're going to have casualties you're going to have random newbie casualties and these newbies are going to see your mm. guild tags and be like oh i'm not playing with this this guild, this guild, this guild, because they're all in here just killing everybody. <laughs> Even though they have their intentions are good, they could still be killing innocent newbies yeah. in the crossfire. And also, like, even if that's one way of kind of balancing and regulating these issues, you got to think about it also from an, <laughs> like a real life business perspective. Uh, by the time that this issue is resolved, you might have lost. 50 to 100 customers that tried the game leveled mm. leveled up a bit and got griefed into mm. the ground a la rust or any other oh, or any rust. other survival <laughs> game oh. they're just gonna be like i am wow. not gonna play that game anymore <laughs> yeah uh, yep. a la rust that's great <laughs> yep. it, uh, it is a point and i think the only way around that would be to have the open world dungeons being like the rewards being mostly cosmetic or optional, having that particular content being uh, op completely optional, so that if, for example, a group of players decides to be assholes and not let anybody else in, it's not going to affect really affect the balance of power or anybody else leveling. They'll just mm -hmm. go and do something mm -hmm. else. Or you but have that would also still... the option that Guild Wars Guild Wars Two kind of did that, not with dungeons, but with like um um uh, like the, the the first kind of free guild hall that people could get you would yeah. walk into the door and it would ask you do you want to go in the open world version or the instance version of your guild they could do that with dungeons where you can go you you get like a pop-up saying do you want to go in the open world parentheses like cosmetic rewards or the instance dungeon parentheses story slash loot mm. And then people make a choice. Like, I want to go in the instance with my group. I don't want to get ganked. If you want the cosmetic, you go in the open world, and then you're putting yourself at risk of getting griefed and all that stuff, but you can also not be at risk. Kind of a gamble. I would probably go into the cosmetic one. Just because it's cosmetic. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, <laughs> that's my that's one of my bigger that goes without that saying. But. That's one of my bigger bigger motivations in an MMO is obtaining cosmetics, obtaining yeah. stuff that you know I can get without having to pour my money into it. Hmm. So uh, that that would be my motivation. Yes, I'm going to get ganked. Like it goes back to the risk versus reward. What's the risk? What's the reward? Am I willing to get ganked over and over for this uh, pretty dress? Yes, I am. <laughs> it's hella cute, okay? Yeah, you know? <laughs> so I mean, I'll do the story later. Like, that's a, that's an instance PVE zone. That that's not gonna affect me as yeah. much. You know, but like, this is gonna like, take they, me longer to do. They could just give you the choice between instance and open world. Keep yeah. that open world idea mm -hmm. that, in my opinion, sucks, but that yeah. they've been with from the start. But give us the option to go in an instance version so we don't get right. ganked and grief. Then that would divide the community a little bit. 
Because then if you give I mean, them the community is going to be divided anyway. So. I know, but if you give people a PvE um, alternative to this dungeon, they're always going to go to the PvE because it's safer. And then uh, you're going to have those people who experience this PvE content asking for more, 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 <laughs> more. And then eventually Ashes is going to cave and oh yeah, this this part of the world is only PvE can't be attacked da, 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 or something along that line it's going to start slowly but then it's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger mm. speaking of cosmetics y'all saw the the renders right mm. for all of the whew, boy that eye candy the, though the alma sets ah. Ooh, yeah man so <laughs> right i mean that's all in chat tl was saying you know for me cosmetics or content for a lot of people those you know they'll they'll go after those those outfits, man, and they showcased uh, some helmets uh, in the last live stream. They showcased different armor types and like much more. I mean, one of them was something we actually saw, and people are like, "We don't want to hear about APOC," and it's like, "Okay, fine." But we did see an early iteration or a more basic iteration of some of the stuff they showcased. But stuff they showcased was much more intricate, uh, much more elaborate, uh, and they. You know, I think that's something even Steven was talking about is like, you know, your gear as you progress, it's going to become, you know, uh, look nicer and nicer. And but even when you start out, it's not going to be like dookie. It's going to be pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I haven't used that. I'm bringing the, I'm bringing the word back, man. Um, <laughs> I love the, uh, the part in PC uh, outfit. That was pretty cool. That, that was awesome. Yes. I need that. The blacksmith outfit. I, I need all of the outfits. Wow. I just mm -hmm. all, give them all. Let me scroll back. I'll grind for them. I don't care. Mm -hmm. They let even me, mm -hmm. let me grind for that shit. I'll yep. Yeah, that, that. that red. Uh, what is it like? A, like a, what is that? A tabard or something? I don't know. It's like in front. Yeah. Mm, right. <laughs> it was really it's nice. So good. It really it's so good. good. I love. I love the outfits. Like the there's one for the blacksmith. There's one with like I don't know. It's the rope no it's like a whip on the right and it has gloves that render was awesome the rogue armor they had looked so uh -huh. good oh the leather set oh, oh i want God. it so badly oh yeah. yes like just seeing that i've always been like torn between the idea of going like fighter or ranger for my main class and as soon as I saw it, I was like, yeah, oh my God, ranger. <laughs> so many more points won from that render <laughs> And it's it's just it's not not like flamboyant. I I really hate it when you've got these rogue armors and wow's notorious for this rogue armors With that are so flamboyant. Yeah, and it's like and you have like the no, sun subdued. that's like over your head. Yeah, or, like or when they have like, like the dripping poison themes on their rogue armor. It's like no, you don't need this. <laughs> it's so love it. that you subtlety. It. <laughs> Mackie's like, give me all the, I'm give the, me all that. I'm the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you uh, on the flamboyant? Did Did anybody ever play Revelation online? No. Uh, oh, God. their their cosmetic shop was amazing. <laughs> like it was a paradise. Cosmetics. It was a. It paradise. was the best part of the game. Let's be honest. It was, yeah, it was super flashy, just very gaudy. Like I love that kind of stuff because I want people to know, hey, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I should have Time entitled if I had if I had been able to have a glimpse into the future, I would have actually just titled this uh, this particular episode like nerding so hard right now or something. <laughs> we're all we're, we're nerding pretty hard over MMO stuff and things. But, you know, <laughs> but even the, the thing that was really cool is where they were like showing the fish and I was like the fishing poles. I mean, I actually looked at the detail on that fishing pole. I was like, oh, my God, dude. Man. I mean, that was really detailed for a fishing pole just saying that's just like that's though it's like highly rendered like that yeah. that fishing pole mm -hmm. is a hell of a render that is not going to be in the game yeah probably like that's the I type a, of fishing pole we're going to have in a screen an official screenshot that took like two quantum computers two years to render <laughs> to announce a new dynamic to fishing or something like that like Watch those I, cool screenshots we see from the devs for eso <laughs> It's like, oh my god, that looks so good. Then you <laughs> hop in the game, and it's basically yeah. all like muddy putty everywhere. It's just like all green. Get a better GPU, bro. Just kidding. <laughs> I, I never thought I would hear grown men get excited about a pole. But uh, 
I was more excited about the uh, two for two, Mackie. I was more excited about the fishing boat caravan or the boat caravan. The boat oh, caravan, yes. yeah, oh, that, that was it, a um, thing. One. It reminded Ooh. me of uh, if you played Civilization, where you send your worker into the water, and it you know goes and does its thing. That's mm-hmm. what it reminded me of, like a caravan on land, and then it true turns into a boat kind of thing. That's yeah. Which was a, one of the reveals too was talking about how, you know, you'll be traveling with your your caravan and you could get to like the get to like a dock or the water somewhere and then there's going to be like what was it like a couple minute one to two minutes transition or something period, yeah. like a construction or transition period to like you know create the uh, the water bearing caravan or whatever whatever words are right yeah. there I don't even know but yeah I've got the I've got the quote here if you uh-huh. want to yeah go for it go cool. so. Yeah. This is what Stephen said. Uh, Caravans are capable of transitioning from land to naval caravans. So if you start out as a land-based caravan and you move to the coast and you want to move into the water, there's going to be a little transition period there. It's going to be a little construction kind of site. You're not going to have to do anything. It's just going to be a timer, right? So you can't, so that you can't quickly move between land and water. It's going to be probably in the matter of, you know, a minute or two minutes. There's a little mm-hmm. vulnerability in that regard. Mm-hmm. What I want to know is if they will have like uh, NPC like bandits spawning for you to uh, defend against the caravan. I think it's going to be people I, like it is when you're traveling. I hope not. I hope it's not going to be NPC because I believe it's going to be people. If mm-hmm. I'm going to raid a caravan, I'm probably That's personally awesome. going to going to wait there and ambush them. I wonder if there'll I'm be more vulnerability. You know what I mean? Like you think about it, right? If you're going after a caravan, we don't know the we got to see snip, you know, snippets of this, but you know, the idea is is that I want to transport virtue stuff across land. I'm calling upon, you know, all of my virtue guild members to come along. All right, I got Mackie Hill in them. I have Cheryl like, you know, shooting people in the face with, you know, rockets or something, and then I'm gonna be holy lighting people in the face. And if it's on the sea, no, I'm gonna be ramming my boat <laughs> into the people. <laughs> the staff I'm, is, I'm not even kidding. If you, if you ever Mackie's played, like, I will save you. If you ever sea, played I'll with me you. in, a, if you ever played with me in Arc Age, I went through so many boats. Right. Because <laughs> I went through. Whoa. Don't ram them. Why? Right. <laughs> but the premise is, you got a you got a caravan. You attack it. You successfully you know, raid that caravan, take the people out, you take stuff, right? So I'm wondering if during this one to two minute period, when we're transitioning from land to water, is there like, you know, how does that work? Because clearly there's got to be some level of vulnerability there. And is it just the stuff in this, uh, you know, you know, a uh, big crate that's being, you know, built upon? And then, you know, you got to like take people out and then destroy that to pop it open like a, what's it, like a nice... <laughs> What is it called? A pinata? Right? You just gotta, yeah. <laughs> it literally was like a pinata. It's just, a, a, yeah. just exploding cool. it's out. It's not going to be in the game, though. <laughs> oh, that would make, that would make I'm going to burst the llama. GPUs oh, Destroy themselves. Don't make it a llama. Don't make it a llama because people a are getting real. You know, Fortnite. <laughs> oh, <it's> a, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are like, Sim, too soon. Too soon. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. So yeah, but they even had the details on like the tongs and the and the the metal ingot or whatever mm. that was. I mean, it's a lot of detail and it's a lot of detail and little things. Here's the thing. Here's where I'm gonna go. Like tie this back into earlier part of our conversation, talking about the eight player dungeons and we talked about you know having all those people in there. One thing I was thinking about when Pacha, you were talking about having all those people in there and having to fill the group and all that was. Yeah, we also have to think about those crazy spell effects that we saw and how, like, for eight people, you know, if you go into, like, a Elder Scrolls dungeon right now in an instance dungeon and run around, I mean, four people spell effects can actually be quite a bit. Even with... can flood your screen. Yeah. Especially on a potato. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So with eight, you know, it's like, okay, let's double that. And then on top of that, like, these spell effects are pretty blingy they're insane <laughs> right clearly they're, they're gonna be working on it insane. yeah and then it's open world so then you got another group of eight mm-hmm. people there so you got 16 people doing that in that video we had what four 
Mm-hmm. And then you could have the the classes, the people who have classes that they know this skill is going to like people, so they just spam it just to like people out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen. Oh, at all. I don't know if you guys I'll be, be so uh, sad. Because like, I'll so be doing easy that. To basically, like, <laughs> oh, fuck like, you, Mackie. <laughs> It's like basically the ancestor of DDoSing an MMO is like a World of Warcraft. You would go into like the throne room and the entire server would go oh, there and just spam their skills yeah. and the server yeah. would legit crash. Yeah. And everyone on the server, even like you were Horde side, you did yeah. that. Even Alliance side, people would crash because of that. Mm-hmm. So... That's mm-hmm. going to be rough on their servers. And Steven did say like they want uh, like a and they want, and that's something that we're probably going to talk about later. But he wants a flawless launch. Yeah, this oh, is the next yeah, point. Yeah, that's <laughs> never going to happen. I knew this yeah, point. I knew this point perfect, was going to be perfect, a conversation. Uh, perfect that's, example of uh, lagging people out is Elder yeah. Scrolls in Cyrodiil. Oh. People purposely use certain proc sets so that oh. way it it's a big, it's a huge. Uh, I load on the server yeah. and so it lags everyone out and they can get their damage off and you're mm-hmm. dead within like seconds because you lag down mm-hmm. wow, so sad. steve let's 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 all right let's steven said he made two points okay and i'm gonna make sure i he said in the that launch day is really important yes it is right and that he wants a flawless launch day and i saw jeff's face when he said that <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, poor Jeff. He's just like, e, don't, don't say that. Yeah. Don't do it. Launch days are going to break. They traditionally break. They do. Yeah. Right? The game breaks. I've never had a single online game that had anywhere close to a flawless launch. It never yeah. happens. Even bad of... games. Even bad yeah. games have been out for like five years. They just... Yeah. Even oh, games yeah. that, like nobody, like we don't expect a lot, a lot of players to play. They don't have a flawless launch. Yeah. And when he said that, I hate doing that comparison because they came in late and they're basically stealing every concept. But when New World uh, appeared and they were basically using every single concept that Ash's Creation is going for, but yep. like in a light version. Uh, I'm going to play the hell out of that game until Ashes comes out. But in the meantime, Mm. in the video they released earlier uh, last week, I think, in New World, they said that New World will have social dynamism unlike ever seen before in any other game. And when Steven said that he was looking for a flawless launch, I was like, dude, like, are you the same company just throwing these kind of words (laughs) that mean nothing in everything like you should know you have a team of veteran developers with you all of them will tell you there is no such thing as a flawless launch day Mm -hmm. our servers will be flooded there will be queues there will be resets our marketing Mm -hmm. team will be on twitter posting every 15 minutes that they apologize for the delays that's normal and i'm not expecting mm-hmm. anything better than that like so man and in chat i gotta go i gotta i gotta touch on this people are 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 hint to hitting on this too right talking about launch day uh doesn't have a sit hiccup can you call it successful it's coming from beer tech right and you don't get a flawless launch even in single player games these days right by cheryl's mm-hmm. and and oz is saying if there's no technical issues you know, well, you got a massive rush for people like because they're going after mobs and stuff. And this is the thing, like you got server limits and capacity, right? That you got to factor into this. How much can you anticipate? You can only anticipate so much. And here's my concern with that statement, right? Steven, nothing but respect, right? Here's the problem. When you say stuff like that publicly, you set an expectation for yourself that even though it even though it could be hopeful is an expectation. People are going to say, well, he said it. So it's already happened. It's already happened with the game already. Right. And it's like bit him in the ass. And this is one of those things, one of those things where he said a flawless launch. I was like, Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I expected well, the crash. Yeah. I, I'm I like, gonna, I mean, there's going to be, 
it's going to come down to us in the community to basically tail back people's expectations and yep. say, look, actually, no, it will not be a flawless, regardless of what mm -hmm. Stephen says, it will not be flawless. And we need to kind of reiterate that over and over again. Right. Which, if, say, for in a perfect world, there's nothing that happens. Servers are up. We're able to get in without any hiccup. The one thing I am worried about is, say you have a main story quest or a side quest and that NPC is not there. You know, you run into these issues where, hey, this NPC is not even here, or these mobs aren't here, mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, well, like there's an orange box item. over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. there's an orange box over here. I fell through the world, Ooh. or, you know, half the map is missing, you know, kind of thing. So even if uh, you're able to log in and uh, do stuff, mm -hmm. who's to say those things are even functional with all the people on the server? I mean, like yeah. I said, it like I said in chat, like a few like a few minutes earlier. If it doesn't break on launch, that's because I'll be worried about the popularity and the success of the MMO. I mean, would, I don't... It should well not break, but if there's no queue, if there's no reset necessary because of the amount of players, something's wrong. There should be a queue. It's basically a natural. DDoS attack on your servers. You're launching, you're tailing the entire world. My game is ready, go. And people right. will just rush. The floodgates will open. And that's normal. That's what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. And I don't think it would, I don't, I'm, I, I don't think it will have that issue where there's not a queue. I'm expecting a queue because even bad games bless online. Mm -hmm. They had, <laughs> they had, they had to open up servers, and this game was out for five years already, and it was garbage everywhere. But still, the MMO community, as we know, will flock to the newest yeah. shiny thing just to see what it's about. So I expect mm -hmm. Ashes <laughs> day day one on on launch will A be offline. <laughs> Yo, yeah. I I know that for myself when they're gonna announce the day the release date for Ashes creation, and there's the head start. I know that. <laughs> Instead of like, I, I want to take vacation days to play. I'm not going to take day one of launch as my vacation day because I know I'm not going. I'm not even going to be able to play on launch. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be trying to connect, be on Twitter, pressing F5 on my keyboard nonstop to refresh, and that's it. I'm not even going to be mad about it. I'm going to read what this your text you said. That's why you need those two uh, early start days so you can be like, yeah, this is yeah, nice. <laughs> and, and then launch and you can't play that. Yeah. Game. I'm going to read what Veertech said in there. It said, and this is a very good point because this is exactly where I stand, right? Unless your beta 2 has got like, it's open to the world to play, right? If Unless you make at least some period of time in that beta 2 period, open for anybody to try out, you're not going to get the numbers you need to, to like anticipate yeah. the servers getting overloaded. Not truly, right? Like, great point. And then the other point is that TLP had said in chat was the always wanting perfection is the reason we haven't gotten a lot of information. Community feedback right there. I got to read it, right? Whether like it or like me or not for it, you know, I'm going to I'm going to always present what the community's concerns are, even if they don't like it, because that's mm -hmm. I'm not doing any good doing this if I'm not. Yeah, um, that's right. why we're here. <clears throat> exactly. Yeah. Um, so but, if on day one of release, you guys are having trouble connecting to the game, remember that this video is sponsored by NordVPN. It's <laughs> oh, my God. Connection from anywhere in the world. <laughs> oh my God. Full yeah. disclosure, this uh, is a non-sponsored <laughs> stream. That's all bullshit. <laughs> oh, Pasha, I love you. Oh, my goodness. God bless. Um, yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I was... Osmazian. I hope I've said that. Osmazian. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I honestly wonder what if any of the like engineers or any of the back end staff were watching that and when Steven said that and just face palming it's like, oh no. Because then it put, it doesn't just put pressure on like Steven in the top end, it puts pressure on those guys as well. Mm. Like the the engineers and, and the back end staff who are trying to keep the servers running. Because mm -hmm. they're True. gonna get shit for it as well yep. yeah yeah i mean it's not really their yep. fault that's all jeff's face yeah. he he, he kind of had this look on he's like 
Yeah, he kind of like froze. Like, <laughs> oh, like yeah. oh. I was it's, like, it's oh, like oh, the release before twenty twenty type deal. It's Ooh. it's now all over again. Uh, poor poor Stephen. He's got a good Gosh. heart and he knows what he wants. He just it's that inexperience. We've talked about this before. His yeah. inexperience. Yeah. But at the same time, it brings us back to what he said himself. He's an MMO player. He has no experience developing games. He's a very enthusiastic and positive, like, uh, optimistic guy. And that's why he surrounds himself with veteran developers that can, you know, as he's flying on his balloon, they can try to drag him down, but they're all going to fly a little bit higher because of it. So hopefully that's what's going to happen. I just don't want them to try to go too too high because like we we saw what happened when they tried when they tried to go too fast crashed and burn so they cut mm -hmm. down a little bit on the transparency they added some delays they stopped giving us dates mm -hmm. now if he's trying to go too high in terms of quality and expectations then that can also be dangerous where people well the, where the the, the 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 hype itself is going way out of control and so, the hype was going out of control at Kickstarter, so like you gotta, oh, you gotta stop did. that. It was insane. Yeah. So should we? So should he give all his information to Margaret then, and have Margaret be the <laughs> first line of defense at this point? I feel like it should be a collaboration of Margaret and Toast, uh, because. And I, we talked about this a little bit before. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I don't think Margaret, in terms of she's the marketing management, uh, the marketing manager, uh, and Toast is a community manager, I feel like they should be on equal grounds <clears throat> and they should work together on releasing information to the community and to the open market but it shouldn't be just in Margaret's hands. Like, she's good, she's really good, she's really talented, but don't give everything to marketing because the game becomes an advertisement and nothing else. Right. Mm. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually <laughs> jump in. <laughs> mm. We all must <laughs> use, like... Mm. So I'm going to tie into something that I'm was brought up. Sponsored, so I can't talk shit. I mean, <laughs> I, I'm going to share something. So I was gathering questions from community members on um, Thursday uh, on, during that live stream I was talking about. <clears throat> and as I was having the discussion with people in the community, T Elf brought up a point about how essentially during the live stream that there were people in chat that were asking about housing. And, you know, we even talked about this here on the show about a month ago, right? After the, yeah. the the live stream prior, which is when they showcased Alpha One for the first time on stream. And, you know, there were discussions that was like, hey, we're going to showcase housing, some something related to housing at uh, the next live stream. Well, that was last Thursday <laughs> and that didn't happen. And people in chat were asking about it and it was ignored. Yeah. It was it was ignored there. I mean, it wasn't unseen. It was legit ignored because right. it was everywhere yeah. in the chat. Yeah, it was a lot of people I, doing, talking about. It, yeah, yeah, that happens with a lot of questions, honestly. Um, how do I put it? If you go like right before they put out the uh, the live stream, you know how they have that little that little day or two where it's like, hey, submit questions. Yeah, you go to that Q&A on Discord and every one of those uh, questions is being answered by Jalan or Alluring some other uh, uh, moderator or a community member. Yeah. And Toast will answer one or two randomly every now and then. But they're always the easy ones. They're never the, the ones that they want in-depth yeah. uh, information or elaboration on a previous question that was asked. Uh, it's always, uh, you know, hey, here's this link. <laughs> Leave me alone, kind of. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the, I don't know if, like, again, if Steven is sharing all the information or the team is sharing all the information with Margaret and Margaret is sharing again, information with toast. It just seems like there's a disconnect between all three of them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you know, we go back to if, if anybody at Trep is watching this, it's, you know, I, I, I might be a content creator for the game and I might make a show or might do this and do that and everything. But, 
you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you know, I feel like it's definitely a duty in, in this capacity to be very transparent and give honest criticism. And, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's not positive for the community of the game. If you just completely disregard that, uh, and I got to watch it live, but it was working at the same time. So I didn't really catch that. And then I, you know, my, my perspective is that quite frankly, you know, if, if you, if if, if you're making the game right at the end of the day, all you got to say, you can simply say, Hey, you know what? Uh, no, we were going to, we said we were going to try to cover that. We did have a plan to, we did anticipate doing it. It just didn't work out that way. Um, we're going to try to get to it next time. I mean, even if that's all you say, you, you address it. You don't have to tell people what they want to hear. You don't have to deliver on it. You never really promised it. At least it just seemed like it was like, Hey, here's kind of the plan. And if you go, Hey, plans change, you know, we, we didn't get it in there. We're going to try for this later. Okay, cool. But you know, I think that's totally great. I, I I don't think anyone would have a problem with that, but you know, if you just ignore it, that's kind of a, that's kind of a, of a, of something that terrifies a lot of companies is taking the blame. Yeah. And the thing is, it's been Can shown. Can you really blame them though? You, well, you can't because it's a reflex. It's a reflex not to take the blame, but it's been mm-hmm. shown over and over and over again in history that when a company has mm-hmm. to deal with a crisis, and now I'm not talking about the fact that the housing question is a crisis because they ignored it, yeah. but it shows that when... <laughs> it is <laughs> it is we want the maid cafe, we need this. <laughs> oh, God. When they take the blame and they assume their responsibility in, in, in something that they failed on delivering or something that they simply mm-hmm. failed on doing... Uh, then it's by the majority regarded extremely well and in the long term is very beneficial to the company. And that goes for businesses not only in video games, but in every single part of any industry. When you accept the blame and the responsibility graciously, it goes well. You go with United Airlines when they were like blaming everyone and they weren't accepting like responsibility for that thing that happened on the plane where like security guards were like beating someone up. That went, well, that went over badly. Mm. Accept responsibility and people will be fine with you. They're going to be like, you're human. It's normal. You're going to have a lot of, you're still going to have people who are going to call you out and insult you. But like, you want the majority of your community to be behind you. You don't want just. The, the most vocal people being mm-hmm. behind you, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and it goes back to keeping them honest because we've had this fiasco before of Steven saying one thing or a member of the team saying one thing, not delivering, and then a period of silence and the community is still, where's this at? Where's this at? Where's mm-hmm. this at? And then after many, many weeks or months, they finally address it. And that just you lose confidence in uh, the company you're putting money behind. Yeah. I'm going to read something directly from chat. The community isn't stupid. It's better to just take the blame because folks are going to be mad either way. And look, just my opinion, just, uh, you know, to what I said, just own it and kind of like, you know, say, Hey, wasn't ready. Didn't do it. We'll try to get to it later. Whatever, whatever it is. You don't even have to really give a long explanation. Just don't ignore it. But what were you going to say, miss? Uh, oh just God. that, I mean, we have, um, yeah, we should be holding them accountable. <laughs> the thing that I don't get is that we're told, I'm, I'm sure Patch has gone through this whole routine given his job. I'm not quite sure about you two, but might have done the same. When it comes to customer service, like when we're told in customer service training, when we make a mistake, what the two things that people want to hear are, I'm sorry like a genuine mm. apology mm. and not necessarily uh, what's going like what, what you're doing specifically, but how you're going to make sure the Fix mistake it. doesn't happen mm. again. Make up Those are the it, two yeah. things that people want to hear. And as long as you're upfront about that, m- the majority of people, yes, there's still going to be the assholes who are like, Oh my God, you're, you're an idiot. Don't, don't talk to me ever again, mm-hmm. but the majority of people will accept that. And yeah. I, I feel like too many companies, particularly games companies, are so afraid of the backlash that they just shut down completely. 
and yeah. it's so sad. Behind behind a curtain, and mm. I gotta go back to one thing that Night Scream said in chat. Yeah. The most vocal people also tend to be the ones that never show up. You want the silent majority, not the vocal minority, and that is yeah. so true yeah. in so many aspects. I agree with that. From video game companies to even just guilds in games, your vocal people who are super active in chat are not necessarily the ones who are gonna show up to your event or to your raid. They're Die hard the supporters. They're going to give you excuses for not showing up, and they're always going to be chatting mm -hmm. and making jokes, but are never going to be there to support you. Like so, you, you want so you mm -hmm. want that silent majority because, especially in MMO, you need the first M, which is massive. You need the masses. You need the players. You don't need three people that complain on your game. <laughs> just like that i show up I show lexer <laughs> yeah. Hey. oh man you know yeah it's it's so sad it really is it's like that with uh, the discord as well true like you you have the vocal who are always in discord and honestly i i rarely see any of you guys in discord in the official <laughs> ashes discord i see you every now and then but yeah. I mostly see uh, you guys on the official forums or Twitter, but yeah. I never yeah. see like. I used to be a lot more active. I used to be a lot more active on the Discord, but I mean, I, I touched, I I'm talked about that. A lot more active, like two months before the game releases. Yeah. But like that's yeah. it. I watch a couple channels and and I kind of just mind my own business these days. Just you know I, I mean even the aoc <laughs> discussion isn't even about ashes anymore so. yeah, <laughs> why, yeah. Why, why and we fully bother? accepted that yeah it's, it's always funny to me when people come like new people come into the uh to the ashes discord particularly to the ashes discussion channel and yeah. we're like we're talking about some random stuff that is no way related to ashes totally not. at all and, and they come in we talking about taco recipes and i was like and work. these new people come in and they say why aren't you talking about ash is like <laughs> mm -hmm. there's an off-topic uh, yeah. channel yeah. down there you must use that and it's like dude We've been here for two and a half years. There's yeah. literally nothing to talk yeah. about. Chill. Yeah, we talk about like, like, everything in that Discord. So like, there's no point. Like, mm -hmm. Back in 2018, there was a mass exodus. Where? Huh. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So, oh. yeah, I was actually, like, questioning a chat there. Oh. Talking about there isn't that much to be active about. But also, I think, you know, when, when that's the situation, you're talking about, like, the vocal minority Right, as opposed to the potential silent majority, and the majority might still be watching, uh, but they just may not be participating. Like I, I check in, I I'll watch from time to time, I pay attention to things in chat. I just don't chime in as much anymore. Um, yeah. uh, you know, and my perspectives on that. You can go back to previous podcasts because I'm not going to repeat myself. Uh, but I, I vented about it significantly, and I'm, I've left it on a show. If you want to find out my opinion, you can go back and find it because I'm not gonna. But oh wait, I'm not gonna. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like something Pacha said earlier. I'm not gonna. <laughs> but I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I'm not gonna. But there is another point. We are. I, I want to make sure we we don't you know stray too too much. We've got some other points. There's two other points I want to definitely make sure we hit on. Uh, well, and first I'm gonna hit this one. It's a real quick one here. But it's the he, he there was a question about the reticle and. He had mentioned that you can toggle on action and MMO mode currently. So I was just, you know, yeah. I don't know how much of that's going to be um, there later. But I was actually really curious if that's maybe the approach they're going to have to the end game later. So I was just curious about that. Did you all have any thoughts when you heard that? Did you notice that? Yeah, the so toggling back and forth, that is something we've seen in other MMORPGs before. Terror and I think... Uh, Revelation also had it, um, and that was purely for the auto attack, uh, yeah. where you could either have it have the cursor bound to the middle of the screen, and basically, particularly for ranged weapons, it acted like a almost like a third person shooter type mm -hmm. deal. It was, was um, oh, yeah, cool. and like and then you would you could unlock the cursor to use certain abilities if you wanted to. Yeah, it was a big, uh, big that. issue in Revelations Online because a lot of the range classes could literally uh, shoot you, auto, auto 
attack you mm. uh, through um, through, walls. through stuff, through walls, through rocks, yeah. through mm. the world. <laughs> then uh, people who were just using straight up action combat didn't necessarily have that. Mm. Like the uh, the skill would go off, but it would drop off halfway. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I prefer it to be more fluid, like between having to tab target and yeah, use your reticle in game. Not not like really anything you toggle on and off, but it could just be something you, that Stephen was talking about in terms of like what they're currently doing now to test the two different modes as they're working towards. And I'm hoping that's the case. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about uh, was and briefly talk about, okay, because. <laughs> Because this is one that could go on for ah oh, shit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just back up here and we'll we'll we're, I'm just gonna retract that. I'm gonna actually talk about the no discussion first. Okay, um, okay. so th- I'm gonna read the question and answer here. Okay, I, I found that this was a I don't know maybe I just found this to be interesting and I felt like it was important to note because nodes are the core of the game, right? And you've mentioned. Castle region static and zones of influence flexible, but can you go into more details about economic regions? And so Stephen said the economic regions as well as the castle region share the same static boundaries. Those are more geographical in nature and align with mountain passes, rivers, and things of that nature, like more geographical kind of boundaries. Uh, these are the de- geographic divisions in the world that will use to determine transit rates, uh, transit of goods, boundaries of warehouse deposits, the influence of castle taxing regions, etc. These are static as a design team wants to add uh, a specific system to things and the node regions are more flexible. Uh, is there a, as they are closer Man, I'm just going to ruin this. A closer border to the coast can take a. Okay, I'm reading this, the transcript, and it's like horribly worded. So this was butchered. But basically, is there a closer border to a coast? Can I take a node over? There's a lot of different components to that algorithm. So basically talking that that the algorithm has a lot more layers uh, in terms of the node regions that are more flexible. Uh, Okay. I'm just going to post this in chat because this is like horribly worded. So it's not on me. I just wanted to like, I was going to read so, over this. Here's what it, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to post it. So what I'm getting from what you said is yeah. economic regions are static mm-hmm. and uh, that's it, right? That's what, that's our main mm-hmm. concern is economic regions being static. Yep. Um, I'm kind of on the fence about that. I don't know. Cause it, if you have an economic region of a metropolis that is getting deleveled, the, um, I don't even know what my thought was anymore. <laughs> I mean, it's a complicated topic. Yeah, like, this sure. transcript was a little bit butched, butchered here, but I I was under the impression that, like, my understanding of the whole node and zone of influence was that as the node level ups, the vote zone of influence increases in size. So, of course, it's going to be dynamic in that way and flexible in that way. So the ge- geographical divisions, right? They're it's just I'm, I'm I, I, I just noticed that when I when I heard him say this, he talked about how there were like the, these divisions, like geographically, like mountain passes, rivers and stuff like that. But then there's also the ones that are like, you know, the actual zone of influence. And I'm like, so how what's the difference between like how much variation are we talking about? Like what's, where's like a really hard line and, and is it not a hard line? And is there just like a certain level of variation that like, what's the algorithm like actually going to look right. like? Cause then I go, well, if we take the economic piece out of it, how much of that translates into uh, the cultural influence in terms of like design for a node, you know, like, uh, is it going to look more Empyrean or more, uh, <laughs> Tolnar. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh god. There would need to be hard <laughs> boundaries for the zone of influence though because that will also affect things like um oh, what superpower you get. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. For the no superpower. So there needs yeah. to be a, a hard boundary, a hard or, or our, like something set. So will our maps show us this hard boundary like will it be or if we or if we're traversing the world will there just like be a big green line yeah oh, in the world no. that no. says this is where your node ends and then you you uh I hope cross not. over 
and your tax rate goes from like 2% to 8% because you just went from a different economic node. Mm. So if I were doing it, I'd have it mm. labeled on the main map and then um, instead of having like a big green line like you might see in front of the <laughs> or anything like that, I'd just have, I'd, I'd have it very much like they have in WoW where you cross into a zone and there's just a little pop-up that says this this is the new zone. This is where you are. Yeah. Now. And that's it. You, I don't think you need anything more than that. And if they mm. want to put it on the map, make it as a filter. Like you have the world map and you can enable filters to see different types of information you want to see on your map, like discovered points of interest you can toggle on and off, just like the nodes, just like the econ economic regions. I'd be fine with that. Yeah. Honestly, I, having I, the, you know, the econ economic regions being static, I'm okay with it, mostly because I'm not good with these kind of things, and it seems like it's a safer bet, it's a mm. safer way to go to make sure that you can kind of keep control over the economy as a studio. So I'm fine with it as long as the market is kind of fun to play with. Mm. Right. It's not completely broken by <laughs> some exploit that some people found by using that dynamism of the region system mm -hmm. right i liked i mean i'm not against it being static i'm just like like you said should it should be a toggle or something that that gives you the information especially if yeah. you're a, a merchant trying to sell your wares Make uh, clear. you mm -hmm. know oh where am i gonna what's what's the best bank for my buck you, you know kind of thing through a filter or through yeah clear. Mm -hmm. yeah definitely because I could see that uh, being a huge uh, problem, not problem, but a uh, situation for uh, hubs, for main yeah. hubs. Like, oh, I don't want to go to there because their tax rate is too high. I want to, I want to live here because it's a lower tax rate kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, I definitely don't want it to look like the Black Desert map. That that Black Desert map, I don't like. Uh, I mean, the Black Desert UI just makes my soul bleed. Oh, it does. <laughs> There's so much information overload on that UI. It's absolutely insane. Yeah. All right, so we have some we have some other points for next time, um, but and we've hit the questions. We had the forum discussion around uh, character. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I'm trying to, we don't want this to be a two hour episode, but at the same yeah, time, we do. yes, we do. <laughs> DPS meters. I'm going to just put it out there. Okay. Oh, like, oh, I'm, oh well, well, no. people are controversial. People, people <laughs> I talked wow. about this last week. I'm just going to say, make it a basic perspective as much as you can. And I talked about my perspective this week already in terms of like, right. But it, the reason that this is important is because uh, which which was it, MMORPG.com? Was that the one that like posted the article? Uh, massively OP. Massively OP, thank you. Their, so Their headline oh, was, yeah. it's yes. literally the headline of the article, the title of the article was, um, Ashes the Creation Shows Off Alpha Gameplay Makes a Stand Against DPS Meters. <laughs> literally in the title, and I'm just like, Makes a stand <sighs> against a stand. <laughs> Those are the words, like, yes. As oh. if it's like making a stand against North Korea. Like it's like <laughs> a big bad thing. You're like, come on. They just it's just Steven that said, I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. God bless, dude. So here I'm just DPS meter a perfect launch. Look, people are <laughs> DPS meters will exist. Right. They there were no add ons in SWOTOR back in the day when I played and we ran DPS meters because people will find a way to make them work. They may not be part of the game, may not be in it, but you will have them. Right. Make do I I do I agree? Am I cool with it? I stand with Steven. I think it's it's OK. And I've already explained my rationale on that multiple times in the past. Um, I'm a little more concerned about the fact that that was kind of like how that was published. Uh, a little yeah. more concerned with that being kind of thing because it's like it, people are going to be polarized on this, right? You can you can have your opinion on it, uh, but it being kind of published and kind of being a perspective, it's like, well, this is like now like part of the identity that I don't even necessarily think was really what Steven was really doing there. He was just like, hey, this is a game development decision. It's my game. 
I'm this oh. is a this is a choice that I'm making, and that's how it is. Cool. When he said that, I was like, good for you, dude. I'm on board with yeah. you. Respect. It's your damn game. You do it how you want. And if they don't like it, they don't have to play it. Fair enough. Totally where I stand, right? I'm I'm cool with it. Yeah. From a personal perspective, I'm actually in agreement. I'd like to see a step away from it a bit because it tends to be like this. I kind of have this perspective that, you know, they're useful, they're helpful, sure. But they're also like in a lot of MMO starts to become this like tunnel vision element. Yeah. It is. You don't right? see anything else. And then you got them standing as stupid and my DPS is dead or whatever. But where do you stand? Real quick. Short, sweet to the point. Go. All right. Maki first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> this is Ashes of Prohibition, pretty much. Uh, you know, you, you don't give you don't give players something that they ask for. They're going to find a way to do it anyway. So give them the meter, some some shape or form. You know, it could be toggleable. It could be private. There could be terms of service where if you share your meter outside of you know your your own type of uh, screen or whatever, you could be banned or have some consequences Jesus. You know, something you know like it's gonna happen so yeah. just give it to us just make it toggle for me uh put it in because players want it uh same as mackie uh find a way to make it like it's not necessarily gonna divide the, in the community my way of doing it would be either go kind of like what ESO did with the tra the, the training dummies, where like you can tra you can practice your mm. DPS, but that would be the only way of trying it in game. Um, <clears throat> as for ESO, you know you have actual DPS meters, but if they don't want it in Ashes, don't put it in, but put a way of figuring out what your DPS is. Some people who DPS just really want to know how much they can push their rotation through DPS. That's that's what they they want personally for themselves, not because someone is forcing them to upload a picture of their DPS for a raid. And if they really, really want to make a stand against the industry of <laughs> DPS meters, <laughs> then don't allow DPS meters, don't allow DPS checks, and go for for encounters. Go the way of dynamics and dynamics during dungeons for boss fights rather than dpsing like a spank and tank kind of deal so instead of like oh we gotta burn like a, we got a rage timer and like you gotta dps them down super quickly make it so kind of like i think final fantasy is kind of doing it that way where like you have zones that you can't stand and you gotta move you got telegraphs that you gotta play around you got mechanics to do like and wow we had that in Back when I played in Burning Crusade, like we had to like deal with a puzzle on our own in in the room to make it so the boss would be DPSable. So like do that, but stay away from DPS meters if you really don't want it. Yeah, I uh, I consider DPS meters to be a quality of life thing. I have raided. Uh, done progression raiding in lots of different games for many years, and I can only think of a few very specific cases where my raid has wiped due to a lack of DPS. The majority of the time, you wipe because you fail at the mechanics, not because you didn't do enough DPS. And in that aspect, the DPS meter is pretty much useless. And yeah. that's why, if you look at now, nowadays, the top guilds in WoW, the Mythic guilds, they don't actually post their, uh, their DPS passes anymore because they know that it's pointless because it doesn't mean anything that's not what makes them successful their dps isn't what makes them successful it's the fact that they can perform the mechanics really well so yeah. but if they put it in they put it in i don't really care too much right. so but there's really no way for and we've all played games where at one point in time we get into a group and we get the gear check we get the cp check we get the uh, type of what skill do you have in this, this, this. Hey, healer, do you have this skill equipped? Daily DPS, do you have this skill equipped? What are you running on your weapon? What type of augment do you have? Da, da, da. We, we've all been in that situation before. Mm -hmm. If you have it, I'm, I'm, I 
I want to meet you. <laughs> 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 but I've been in that, even as a healer, I've been in that situation. It's like, hey, healer, uh, what's your Magicka region? What's your Max Magicka? What sets are you running? Can you run this set? Can you switch this monster set? Da 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 da. So, I mean, even if they don't put the meters in the game, there's going to be some way of guilds, groups, pugs, whatever, to be gated uh, on content. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, we move into we would move into the discussion of is it right for you to basically kick somebody because of some requirements? If it's a uh, guild run, that's up to your guild's discretion. Mm-hmm. I'd say even for pugs. I mean, I, if, honestly, if I me, put if a group down, a problem, if it becomes a problem for the community, for any part of the community, not having enough DPS, then that's the fault. The blame goes to the studio. Yeah, because they've because overtuned the fight. They made, they made the encounters that way. So they pur- purposefully, or they were too incompetent to make the encounters mm. need actual IQ instead of button mm-hmm. mashing. Mm. And it's on it's on their own, it's it's their own fault if the community dies. It's never gonna die because of DPS meters, but like if it's it's their own fault if people are people's feelings are hurt because of DPS meters, it's because they didn't make encounters like interactive enough. My perspective is if you want to play the game bad enough, that won't really matter. You'll find a way to like gauge progress and you know solve those problems in terms of like gauging a person's skill level and all that. Any, anybody who's like been playing MMOs for a while or led guilds or led raids and stuff. It, look, I, I've, I've done the raid leader thing, the PVP leader thing, the guild leader thing. I'm telling you, man, if you know what you're doing as a leader, as of any of that content, you can tell when people aren't cutting it and you don't need that to tell you. You just don't. Definitely. Yeah. You just know yeah. who they are. You see it. Yeah. Like yeah. we had a guy I remember like a long time ago in WoW when I was hardcore raiding, there was this guy who was always at the top of the charts in damage for the DPS meter. But our guild leader didn't like he never looked at the DPS meter because we wiped all the time because of that dude. There was this <laughs> boss that like if you took a, if you like drank a potion, if your health or mana would like change, right? He would just like go for you, one shot you and what and wipe the entire group and like <laughs> He said, like, dude, it's your fault. You drank the potion. He's like, no, I didn't. I'm popping the DPS. <laughs> like, I saw you! <laughs> and he kicked him out of the guild. Oh, <laughs> DPS is not the only thing. Oh, my <laughs> God, dude. It's so true, man. So true. <laughs> you know what? I, as we've been talking, I was actually looking at uh, the... Uh, there was a discussion in the forums and I'm going to encourage anybody that's going to be here next week or especially to actually go check it out. Uh, his name's Marzo. He did a talked about learning how to visualize a character's power growth. Uh, and I've actually gotten some ideas in terms of what I wanted to discuss next time. And we've already got some bullet points for that. And this is actually going to tie in much better with that conversation, but we still also have a, a Pantheon conversation coming up. So friends, regardless of what we get from ashes this month, um, there were actually a couple tweets as well, talking about lore related to cosmetics. I didn't even discuss today either. So I've got two shows already planned for us that are going to be full conversations, one related to war and one related to uh, mechanics and uh, in game and character development. So we've already got two shows squared away, ready to go. So I'm going to roll that over into next time. And even though I was going to try so hard to make this right around an hour, it looks like every looks like Miss got us away because we're running at two hours, friends. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tell you, man, it, yeah, this is what happens? You should know this by now. <laughs> for everybody beforehand, uh, Sim told us <laughs> he yelled at us. Everybody he he did not. <laughs> yeah. Why you got to tell lies? <laughs> <laughs> we got the whip out. Honesty. I didn't like it at all. Ninety minutes. That's it. That's so We're true. <laughs> no, you wrong. Okay, so we're gonna. <laughs> I, I've already titled the next episode, uh, episode 73, Ashes of Prohibition, but we'll see if it sticks by next time. Guess you'll you, should, you should label it uh, Spank and Tank. All right. Oh, uh, yes. Or I could call it Sweaty and. What was it? Sweaty <laughs> was and. It, uh, <laughs> 
sweaty, sweaty. I can't remember what I said. Sweaty. And I mean, you can just be sweaty and tired. confused, sweaty and lonely, sweaty and tired. tireless, sweaty oh my and. God, it sounds like me right now. <laughs> oh, so hot here. I don't have AC. Oh no. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh that's um. Thanks. Homie, I feel for you because I am a hot natured individual, and that would not fly for this phoenix oh you know God. what i'm saying <laughs> so tell you what now i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little shout out here for a couple things before we wrap this up and i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and let my guests go ahead and shout out their stuff and things so we'll start with mackie pacha and then to wondering miss gentlemen please go ahead and let everybody know your domains where you reign how they can find you oh hi i'm mackie you can <laughs> <laughs> i got distracted yeah, I mean, I hi mackie uh, <laughs> uh Go play Raid now out on mobile. Uh, no, you can yeah. uh, <laughs> you can find me on uh, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Ashes forums as Makanoji. Uh, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> oh, sorry. Kill me, Obi. For me, you can find me on Twitter uh, at TV Pacha or on Mixer.com slash Pacha TV. Because uh, I ain't having any of that Twitch, y'all. Um, <laughs> other than that, uh, you can find me on the Discord for Ashes of Creation. It's just at <sighs> Pasha. You're going to find me there. And uh, gamers, remember that this game was sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. This no. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. Damn it, Pasha. <laughs> Wondering, Miss, if you could take a deep breath. <laughs> this is going right off the rails. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, you can find me on my YouTube channel, uh, Wandering Mist. Um, I'm attempting to put up two videos per week, one on a Tuesday, one on a Saturday, so look out for that. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from that, I'm active on the forum, the Ashes forums and the Ashes Discord by the same name. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done. That's it. That's cool. What so yeah. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just going to start. I just need to put a post-it note up here so I know exactly what to say. When Pacha misbehaves, I'll be like, Pacha, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm no manscaped. I know, right? Oh, God. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, join us next week, everybody. But first, I'm going to do a couple things. Uh, Tuesday, I've been covering some MMORPGs that are in development, aside from Ashes, if you're interested in other ones. Uh, check me this Tuesday. I'm covering one uh called defend the night uh we're talking about one of their class reviews for the shadow night so be tuesday 7 p.m cdt here on my stream uh i've done some for uh saga lucimi and for um uh, uh valar as well so definitely go check the youtube out check those out uh wandering mist has been making content go check out his new video he did real recently five things he wants to see in mmo if i'm right yeah correct Miss. Yep. 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 He could the, use some with subs. The crappy audio, but yes. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> video. Chime in, give him your thoughts. Go toss him a follow. I did one today, so you guys should go do it too. Um, also, if you're interested in being on the show, you can hit me up on Discord. Uh, some more hashtag zero zero one. Um, although I'm very happy with the the homies we've had here. It's been really great. Very full conversations. Always a good time. Um, we're always looking to bring on more people from the community. So if you're interested in carrying the Pathfinder torch and joining the show to help contribute to the conversation, uh, you're more than welcome. Just hit me up in Discord. Uh, also, please follow at Ashes Pathfinder on Twitter. That is the show's Twitter, and that's where all announcements for the show and the people that are on the show will be. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I got. Join the Discord. And if you are watching on YouTube or here live on Twitch, you're a Pathfinder and you're more than welcome each week. Thank you for being here and uh, keeping this conversation more than lit in chat. It's been an absolute pleasure, everybody. And uh, until next week, Pathfinders, we will catch you on stream. Have a great week. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Also, remember this video was sponsored by Honey. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pacha, no. Uh